I'm Dr. Ernest Jackson, and I'm honored to share with you the living Word of God. On last week, we left off talking about if any man be in Christ, and we were talking about the integrity of God's Word. So we had, we were talking about, actually, we were saying maintenance, and we were calling it maintenance too. So we're going to call this week maintenance three, because we want to show you uh, what to maintain, and we got to we got to take you through a step processes. In other words, what happens is, as we've been talking about if any man being Christ, we got to get in Christ first for these other things to work. It's just like the finely tuned uh, watch or your car. You, you never imagine how many pieces are moving in your car while you're driving. They have to be in sync and in perfect timing. Actually, in your car, they have a thing that's called a timing belt, which if it's at the proper timing, it help everything else be in the timing. So you need to know that certain things you have to have in place in the right position, in the right timing to work in sync or work together with the things God has planned. I hope you're understanding that. Uh, so, but this week what I want to bring out is something that I'm wrestling with. And what I'm wrestling with is that I don't want people to stay in a position of just believing. There are absolutes. And you and I can find them and prove them. Actually, we must. You know, people say it's all according to faith and not knowing that the word faith from the Greek means persuasion. It is a faith persuasion. Again, if you look up the definition of faith in the Greek, the first definition is going to be persuasion. Now, in the definitions of the word faith, down the bottom, about the third from the bottom, is going to be the word believing or believe. So believing is part of faith. The whole sum total of faith is you hearing and knowing what to do. You move and you're moving toward that because you're persuaded by what it said. So now as you're persuaded by what it said, you go forward and you do something. Why? Faith without works is dead. So now we find we have to do something. If we're persuaded by this word to act, you've got to move toward it. And as you move toward this word to fulfill it, to obey it, then God will move for you because you're going in sync with what he's already established. There are things that are established beyond our believing. Scripture, now unto him that is able to exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. He's able to do that. What about the scripture that says, God hath uh, provided us with all things that pertain, he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Already. It's already designed. It's already there. God's not creating this stuff just as we go along, just, you know, to help us feel good. He's prepared everything. There is access to this. But the life that he's given us, we have to maintain it. Now, when it comes to an airplane or a car or different machinery, there are a lot of pieces. I used to work uh, in, as a tool and die maker years ago. I used to work on molds, injecting molds, injection molds, where you inject plastic. I used to make the Noxel bottles, the caps on the Noxel, I used to make those. And I also you know, worked in a company that made parts for cars and they stamped the different pieces and I used to have to sharpen and take the, you know, the press, 30 done press, take the press out of it, you know, take the insides out, repair them and put them back. So there's a lot of close work. You had to grind certain things and you had to shim certain things within a thousands of an inch and sometimes less than that. So there's a lot of close work to be done in life. Yeah, I guess you can assume that. Well, in your salvation, it is intricate. Only folks didn't know and they didn't tell us because they didn't know. But the Word of God tells us these things just like if you decide you're going to lose weight or you decide you're going to put on weight or you decide you're going to build muscle, you're going to decide you're going to go by something that is established already so that you get the ultimate or the optimum or the complete uh, desire or design that you set out for. 
You want to put on 30 pounds? You want to put on 30 pounds of muscle? They tell you to do certain things. You try it, it works. You can go, I know it works. Well, it was working before you did it. Because somebody else did it and it did work. So my point in case to you is, isn't it the strangest thing? So now that we're in Christ, now that we're new creatures, we just throw our arms out and say, yes, Lord, and don't think there's any work involved. No work involved at all. No toiling. No attention that has to be given. No time that has to be given to this for it to work effectively. It is, and it does, and we must do it or we fail. That's why most of us are living on the edge. It's, it's not about you just believing. Obedience is the key. If I, I've said it before. Let me do it again. How did you think we got in this state of being? Disobedience was the opposite of obedience. So uh, if you and I keep doing opposite of what he tells us to do, isn't that disobedience? And how can we prosper in him the way he wants us to prosper if we don't do what he instructs us to do? The most important thing is this life that he's given us. Are we maintaining it? Do we even know how? Have we asked any questions? This is the strangest thing. You could have, you could mess around, have $10,000, that's all kind of questions at the bank. How, how can I invest this in, you know, where I get a, a, the biggest return and different things like that? You know how we ask questions. And we get a job, uh, a job offer. We want to ask, we want to know what the benefits are. Do I get dental in there? <laughs> okay, I get, I get dental. Do I have to pay for any of this? I do, I don't know, but okay, if you don't have, I don't have to pay for it, this company provided, okay. Do I get dental? Do I get, you know, eye care? What if I got bunions already? If I got, you know, already have some conditions in my back, you know? Will they take care of that? How many days I get off if I need sick days? You know, we ask all kinds of questions. Why is it the greatest undertaking of our entire lives and we have no questions? You may not know this, but like I told you before, I've gotten in trouble for years because I asked too many questions. Well, this is my soul, Mr. Bastard. This is my soul, uh, Bishop, whoever you are. This is my soul, Apostle Jimmy Crackcorn, and I don't care. This is my soul. I should be able to ask you questions, and you should be able to give unto me answers for my life and my soul if you're that big a man or woman of God like you claim you do. And if you can't, maybe you shouldn't call yourself anything. Oops. <clears throat> so here we go. Now, here we are. What are we going to do? What are we given to do? What are we aware of? There's so many things that God is expecting us to do. And the strangest thing, the strangest thing, we claim to walk in the Spirit so strong and walk in the Spirit so deep. <clears throat> but he's, we're not allowing Him to lead us the way he wants to. He's not even, we're not even allowing him to lead us according to the scriptures because we don't study the word. We don't pray over the word. Now you know good and well, if you, they say, you know, for you to be healthy, you need to eat so much of this because in the makeup of this vegetable or fruit or meat is, you know, what you need, this and that is in there. So you need to eat a lot of this. It's going to help you put on weight or this is going to make your system work better. You need greens in your system. And if you plan on being healthy, you're going to eat more greens. You may not like the flavor of all of the greens, but then you'll find one that you like and you eat it with a regular. I try to have greens in every meal, something green in every meal. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because since we'll take an uh, uh, advice for that and look for our best health, especially if you're over 65, you want to look for your best health. But you'll take that from a journeyman of medicine or a journeyman of uh, home, uh, what do you call those things? Homo, whatever they call them things. <laughs> you know, with the pills and the stuff that are not directly from the doctors, but you know, to help you be healthy and all that. I can't think of the word. But anyway, you'll take those, you'll ask questions. You look at the price, I don't need to know about this stuff. What's this going to do? What's the side effects? and use over-the-counter stuff. But we'll ask questions. Why are we asking questions about our salvation? Why are we asking questions on how to grow? Why are we asking questions on what God is expecting from us? Why aren't we doing that? But I want to go a little different way now. Since we were talking last week and the week before, 
concerning maintenance, I want to double back and say, before you can maintain something, I must make this uh, make you aware of this. You have to constantly look at the fact that you have the things that God wants you to have in your life to even maintain it. Do not skip over giving your life to Him. Whatever you do, do not skip over that. Giving your life to Him exactly. Now, here's another thing we're going to be sharing in this segment also. We're going to press to you to prove all things. Don't just take anybody's word for it. This is about your soul. You get one. This is about your eternity. If you pass through the portals of death and you're not walking the way God intended, it's not going to be a good thing. And we got our Bibles, we have teachers and whatnot, and I'm going to say something to you like, like Paul would say. Know who you learn, what you learn from them, but check it in the Scriptures. Make sure what they're teaching you is pure Bible. Not them giving you, uh, you blowing smoke where they taste. Well, you know, oh uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, you, you you ain't been in God long enough to understand this. Well, watch this. If I haven't been in God long enough to understand this, and the people around me haven't been in God long enough to understand this, please tell me, sir, why are you teaching it? Because all you're doing is confusing everybody. Teach me something that's going to help me grow and develop, so I can get my feet planted firmly on, on the ground and stand before God not believing but knowing that he favors me and knowing that he favors me is not the root of believing it's the root of obedience here's the secret if God say do this and do this and do this and do that and I'll be with you do that your believing comes in the fact that you believe what he said. Did you hear that? You believe what he said, and then you apply yourself to it. The believing is up front. If you believe what the word of God says, you apply yourself. There is a time of proving. You're not supposed to walk through this whole life trying to believe God for this, trying to believe God for that. It's not designed that way. It's designed for you, you to know for certain. So now it's time for us to beef up our game and say, guess what? I really want to know God. I want to know, now wait, wait, wait. I want to know what he's thinking. I want to know what his ideas, I want to know what his thoughts are concerning me. Does that ever run, that, ever run through you? Well, the Bible will tell you what his thoughts are concerning you in advance. It will tell you where to position yourself. I was in martial arts for years, and one of the things they always taught us is balance. And a lot of people that were in martial arts, you couldn't get to a place where you can attack a person three different ways at the same time or a combination of block punches and kicks at the same time, three at the same time, because you position yourself, you find your balance on one foot, and so you can block an attack in two other places at the same time. Or, if he's not ready, you can attack with both hands and a foot, and if those are engaged, no man can stop him. If he don't know what he's doing, you already engaged, he ain't, he ain't ready, can't stop nothing do. So my point is, we have to find a balance in God. And so, he that is born of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one touches him not. Imagine you be given the ability to keep the enemy from touching. Somebody says, well, I, I know to rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Well, guess what? If you back him off, listen, <laughs> the scripture let us know, Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You ain't got to get terrified and, and try to use the blood of Jesus and all that kind of stuff and other things that people are telling you that is not scriptural. We want to stay within the parameters. Your clean life will back him off. Hello, read the book. Your clean life will back him off. But what do we do? We won't live clean, or we won't live in a certainty. So now let's get this thing in the core of us for real, like the book said, so that you can look at it, and look in the mirror. Look at the word. Look in the mirror and see the reflection of the word in your life. If you go out and buy a brand new suit or a brand new dress and you try it on in the store, you get it home. You're gonna put that bad boy on and you're gonna turn sideways and make sure look at make sure everything is just like you saw it. Now you fully got it on. You said, "Yeah, this is right." If it look all jacked up, <laughs> twisted, and whatnot when you get it home, you're gonna be like, "Wait a minute!" It didn't look like this in the store. What's wrong with this this outfit? You might want to take it back. Guess what? If your life 
is not reflecting the word of God. You claim that you're a new creature. You are in freshness uh, 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 made from the original formation, sinless, whole, delivered, in freshness with the life of God in you and too, and you're still sinning, you're still disobeying God, still do, living your own life your own way. Then you didn't get it right. We have to have something to go by. And the Word of God is the best thing to go by because, wait, he hastens his word to perform it. He backs his word. He swore. But he couldn't swore by anything greater. He swore by his own word. So we stand on his word. By the way, I want to show you something from last week. <laughs> I want to show you something. I, I, I want to bring out something that's going to be really cute. Let's go back. I want to take you to uh, Colossians 2 and 6. We were there last week, but I want to show you something. In that, 2 and 6, and it says... We're going to give you a good example of this, but it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, walk ye in him. So from the time we received him, we're supposed to walk in him. Last week, last month, last year, ten years ago, we're supposed to consistently walk in Him. You can't do that if you don't know what you're doing, even if the life of God is in you. There are things you have to do, so acquire the things that you have to do. Now watch, one of the things is, is what most Christians don't realize is the source of their life. You've got to have fellowship with God. you got to. You got to get in His Word. You've got to study this Word. You got to apply this Word to your life. You've got to spend time with God in prayer. You've got to humble yourself. You must be broken and yielded. You must come to a point where you are a bond slave or just a slave before Him. Because what? Know ye not that ye are not your own? But you were bought with a price. He paid for you to be free. Why don't we want to yield our lives to Him? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And there is no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved other than the name of Jesus. So what are we thinking? We're running from him to run to where? He's the only Savior. Where are we going? What are we doing? What are we thinking? <laughs> so, you know, and it tells you rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, stable, that word stabilate means to make firm. That's what the definition of that establishes. Stabilate and make firm or strong in the persuasion. In the persuasion. As ye have been taught abounding and growing therein with thanksgiving. Now, let's go over to Psalm 138, I believe. Psalm 138, 1 and 2. Psalms 38, 1 and 2. Excuse me, not 38. Psalms 138. Excuse me. Psalms 138, 1, 3, 8. Psalms 138, 1 and 2. I may have said 38, sorry. Psalms 138, 1 and 2. And it's a psalm of David. It says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Now there is no God beside him, but he's saying before the gods that the people worship, he's going to be out wherever they are and he's going to praise God right in front of them. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness, for thy truth. Thank you for what is true, what is absolute, what is provable. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Now, as I, I brought this out the other week, and it, I wrestled with it throughout the week. But, not, but above all thy name? Above, uh, why did it say names? Above all thy names. It didn't have an S on it. Above all thy name, it says. Wait till you understand this one. Wait till, you, wait till I do this. Where it says above all thy name, it actually means... Uh, appellation or as a mark, uh, a memorial, 
Come look at this. A memorial of individuality. There are memorials of individuality as to who God is. Watch this. So, by implication, honor. So this word where it says name means he's implicated at, or there's a memorial, memorial set up for him as an individual. There's none like him. Right? And it says honor and it says authority. So that word name means authority. It means character. It means renown. It means report. So watch this. God, you have magnified. Thou hast magnified thy word above, watch this, above the fact that there's none like you. You magnified your word above your individuality, the memorial of who you are as God. You have magnified your word above your honor. You have magnified your word above your authority. Look at this. That's what the book said. Don't look at me. You even magnified thy word above thy character. And the word magnified begins to give us an understanding of height. Let me see if I get it right here. Okay. Magnified, it talks about large, whether it's uh, senses in the body of the mind, the estate, the honor, the pride, the advancement, the boast. It also says to grow, to, to increase, to magnify, to be set, much set by, nourished, pass. So you, you've caused your word to pass by the acknowledgement of your character as an individual. Are you, are you hearing this? And magnified, and it goes, uh, pass, promote, proudly, and to tower. So you, God have caused your word to even tower above your might, your power, your glory. Your word towers above all of that. The reason why I did that, to show you the prominence of God's word. So now if his, if he has, he did it, he magnified his own word above his individuality. As who, what his name is, what his character is, who he is. He magnified his word above all of that. So the most important thing is his word. Now, my question to us would be this. If God's word is so prominent that he had magnified it above his own character, his own individuality, his own honor, his own authority, if we stand on it, can we fail? There's no way we can fail. No way. Because everything establishes by, establishes by His Word. So with that being said, the, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people do err by not knowing the Scripture. So we only fail because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We come short. We lack strength, we lack energy, we lack endurance. Have you ever found out sometimes you want to read your Bible and you sit down and read your Bible and fall asleep, but if a TV program is on that you like, you stay awake, watch the next one come on after it. <laughs> Get them to go cut the grass, do anything else you want to do, you know. You can go down to Carowinds, ride rides, and come back and go get hot dogs that day. Because our flesh tends to what it likes. You must break the cycle. You must step outside the box to walk in the Spirit, to obey God, for you to be strong. We're going to give you examples in a minute. Hold on. We're going to give you some examples. Let's go look at um, 1 Chronicles 28 and 9. I want to say, let's talk about the integrity of God's Word. And what God really wants to do in us, and he's got plans for us. What if God's looking for you to be in a certain place? What if he's searching for men and women that will stand in a certain place, stand, look, stand out on, on, on a, a ledge where everybody else is hiding to get away from the wind, and God wants you to stand facing the wind to represent him. 
and we're not there. But he's looking for men and women. Watch this. First Chronicles 28 and 9. Thou, and thou, Solomon, my son, this is what David telling Solomon, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart. And the word perfect here simply means complete. Let's just, just go with that. With a complete heart. Watch what he says. And with a willing mind. Give him your emotions, your affections, your desires, your passions. Give them to him completely and then have a willing mind. This means you're in readiness. Okay, God, I'm yours. And we don't just sing it. We mean it. We don't just do it for the moment. We mean it. This is our lifestyle. We give you ourselves. Here we are. Use me if you want. If you don't, find your God. I'm waiting on you. Get our lives clean, get in the position he wants us to be in, and have a willing mind that if God said, okay, I need you to do this, we're ready to go. Ready to obey him. And this is not just going to church, believe me. Going to church is for our fellowship, our edification, and growth. We go to have a good time. Well, yeah, yeah. If you know what I know, you get more than a good time out of this. You better. Somebody says, well, that's all, that's all I like. Okay. It's not about you. It, it, it was about you when he died. But it's not about you now. It's about him. It's about his kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything you need is going to be added. But we won't do it his way. And wait, if we don't do it his way, how do we think it's going to work again? What, what, in, what in the concept of thinking that we can go opposite of the only God? He said, and Isaiah talking about, said, there's any other God beside me. He said, I know him not. He said, there's none beside me. None. I know not any. <laughs> he looks around. Nobody here but me. I, nope. I know not any. If he was out here, I know him. So here's the guy that steps. He stands in eternity. He said, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He stands in everlasting. And he provided all this for us. And we won't listen and think it's going to work our way. <sighs> Good luck with that. With a willing mind, back in the ninth verse of the 28th chapter, for the Lord searches what? All hearts. We don't even know, but we're going forward. Throughout our day, doing whatever we do. God is searching all hearts. So think about this. If I was cutting up last night, cutting up the weekend, falling down, drunk, hanging out with my buddy, doing what I wanted to do, and then I come say, Lord, you know I love you, Lord. You know I love you. God be like, come on, man. Paraphrasing, come on, man. I've been looking at your heart all week. Your heart has not turned to me all week. But now you're crying. You think God doesn't know that? Look what the scripture says. He searches all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations, all the imaginations of the thoughts. Every imagination that runs through us, he understands it. Every thought that cycles through us. He's aware of it and he understands it. How can we hide in the face of a God like this? For, watch this, for he seeks for, look, look, excuse me. For if thou seek him, he will be found of thee. Are you looking for God today? Somebody says, well, I know I got said, well, you just can't look for him at the altar. That's where you may find him at the altar. But you need to look for this God daily. Regularly. Maintain the life. Keep it all the way up. Keep it full. Keep it powerful. Keep it strong by regenerating, by getting in his presence. That's what folks don't know. You know, and, and I'm not talking about, this is going to be strong. I've been, been around a long time. People get around me often. Hey, they want to speak in tongues. Talk to you. Talk to your Lord in, in your other language. And they never pray other than what they consider in tongues. Well, Paul said, if I'm praying in another tongue, I pray to understand also. So if I don't have the understanding, I should not pray in that other tongue. And the scripture tells us to be quiet. If there's nobody to prophesy or interpret the tongues, you should be quiet. Pray in a muffled voice if you've got to pray in tongues. But Paul said, if I will pray, I will pray with understanding also. What if you're just saying hallelujah, glory to God, don't even know it. And some of the stuff I hear coming out of folks, <laughs> well, I'll leave it that way. And we don't know. 
but you not living a clean life. So I don't care what you're saying in, in whatever language you think you're saying it in. Somebody says it's an unknown tongue. You might want to look that up in the book. So we're doing stuff that's not going to amount to anything that's going to salvage the life of God. It's time to know for certain. When I believe, no, no, no. Stop just believing and prove this thing. <clears throat> Watch this. If thou will seek him, he will be found thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off for a week, for a month. He will cast you off forever. Here's what folks don't know. God is merciful. He's loving. He's kind. But he's nothing to play with. He is nothing to play with. I've said it for years. All you got to do is read the book. Out of the millions of men, women, and children that God had Moses lead out of Egypt into the wilderness, and those that were born in the wilderness, only two got out of there, and Moses wasn't one of them. In disobedience, God even killed the head man. Wait a minute. Here's a man that God used, and he lifted his rod like God told him, and he parted the Red Sea, and the people went over on, over across the sea on dry land, and the east wind blew. When the water congealed, the east wind blew through there and dried up the land, so by morning, Israel could walk over on dry land. Here's a man of God standing there. This is the same man that turned uh, uh, water into blood, the same one that had uh, dust turn into lice spoke and the power of God moved. He didn't make it. Because he didn't continue to obey God. God killed him himself. So I'm saying, don't take this for granted. It takes everything we can muster, if you will, to walk humbly and obedient without God. Maintain this life. Watch this. So here's a time that, and with Asa, and so Asa was king, and so uh, he was, there's another kingdom that was bigger than him, and he was afraid of him, so he asked another king to help him out, all right? So, <laughs> and in this Second Chronicles 16 and 7, and at that time Hanan Hananiah, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hadst relied on the king of Syria, and not rely on the Lord thy God, therefore is the house, the host, excuse me, the host of King of Syria escaped out of thy hands. So he said, Well, skip out of his hand. See, if he had stayed and kept before God like he wanted to, he wouldn't have to have help from another kingdom. God would have taken care of that himself. God is waiting for you and me to rely on him, to inquire of him. Or you got a pastor, he's a man of God, whether he claims to be and isn't, or he is or he is, whatever the case may be, go to him, go to her, go to them, say, listen, I don't want to be lost. I want to know this God. Teach me how to pray. And if they don't really don't know how to ask them, well, where can I buy a book on prayer? Something. Teach me to seek the face of God. If you go, so I know people that come up there, you know, I don't know what to say to God. I don't, I, I can't pray no half hour, no hour, because I don't know what to say to Him. Uh, <laughs> well, if, if that's your position, I'm going to leave it right there. You need to ask your pastor, ask your advance, ask somebody, ask the pastor, can you ask somebody? Something. You cannot stay there because the enemy would suck the life right out of you. Can't stay there. Watch this. Second Chronicles 16 and 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord, watch this, watch, 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 watch. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Guess what he wants to do? To show, him, show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Imagine God is looking for a few good men, <laughs> a few good women that will give their hearts completely to him, yield themselves completely to him. Even in their response to life itself, they give themselves to him. 
He is, his eyes running to and fro the whole earth, looking, he's looking for men. He wants to show himself strong. Imagine God sitting up there, I want to show someone that's heart, their heart is completely to me. I want to show them how strong I really am. If I've got news for you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Show me a heart that's completely mine. I'm going back and forth. I want to show myself strong. He said, therein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. God wanted to show himself strong to this man of God. But in his fear, he went another way. Why am I saying that to you? Because many of us, we're going the wrong direction. We're not, we're not even trying to be complete. We're not even trying to give our all. And we sing songs, all oh, to Jesus I surrender. I, give, I love the Lord with all my heart and we cry. And no, that only means we, only, we love Him with our feelings right then and there. Is the Lord on your mind throughout the day? Is the Lord on your mind throughout the week? Does, you know, do you spend time in prayer? Are you giving time to pray into His Word throughout the day? Your life exists in this, in doing this. You feel the nature of God. If you've been become a new creature like the book says, this will fuel the life and the nature of God that is in you. And then you spend no time in prayer at all. Fifteen minutes. Have no time to study. Well, you, you, I, I got a busy life. I got six kids and a wife and a, a dog or a, a husband and a parakeet. The affairs of this life can choke the word of God out. Along with our, our church doctrine can choke the word of God out, make it of known effect. And so we're choking it by doing everything and the, the enemy's choking it because of our doctrine. And we don't know that we got to stay on top of this bad boy for real. And so inadvertently, we're dying. And the enemy knows it. And he watches. Remember, he's been around a long time. He's going to be destroyed, but not today. It could be my last day. What are we doing? I'm just curious. Is, is, I don't want anyone to sit back and, and wait and see what happens. And when something happens, it's not in your favor. So, and let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 14. 2 Timothy 2 and 14. 2 Timothy 2 and 14, and it says this, Of these things put them in remembrance. That's what I'm doing. Stirring from a couple of weeks before. Stirring again. Putting your remembrance. Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Listen to what the scripture is saying. He said, listen, Stir them up. Put them in remembrance. To study. To study. Look what it says. Study. And that means to use speed, that is to make an effort, to prompt, use diligence, endeavor, labor. We're not laboring in the Word of God. We're not. We don't spend any time. Imagine this is... So I, where I can help you understand it, this is your one of the portions of your spiritual transfusion. The life of God is in His Word, and you don't ingest none. Why is that? Lord saved me in 1967. I remember He saved me in January. So by the time February came around, my birthday came, I became 16. So I'm 16 year old, you know. So by the time June came around, 16 and so many months, I'm already learning verses, a verse a day. That's what the Spirit of God did to me. No pastor did it. No evangelist did it. The Spirit of God dealt with me to learn a scripture every day. And he taught me to learn the punctuation marks. So I would learn a scripture every day, and it fed me. I spend time in prayer as a 16 and a half year old. Time in prayer. This is what I did daily. This was my life from 16 years old. 
So, I wasn't saved. I was on the street. Some of you heard my testimony. I, was, I had a homicidal spirit. I wanted to kill several folks. And if I, I came for you, I came for you at 15 years old. I didn't plan on hurting. I plan on killing you. And your, your, daughters were, <laughs> your daughters will pray. And your sons, if they weren't ready to fight, they need to get off the street. I was a beast. But God changed me. And now, you know, about playing basketball or football, now all of a sudden here I am, I'm in my room praying and talking to this God, researching the scriptures. Because the change he made in me. So my question is, if he did this in me, why wouldn't he do something similar or better in you than he did in me? He would be unrighteous not to. But what are we doing with it? That's the whole thing. That's why I'm going the way I'm going. Watch. Study to show yourself approved unto God. God is watching the steps we take, the moves we make. Are we adding these things together? Are we making any effort? He wants you to meet his approval. Are we trying to meet God's approval or are we just going to church? You can't do like everybody else. And if folks are just doing it, just going to church, and they're not doing the same thing. They're not seeking God. They're not going after him like the scripture said. They're wrong. They should be seeking him. It should be in them as well. I'm going to show you a scripture how this thing can be in you and stay in you 45 years and make you strong in God. That's scripture. And give you a hunger and a thirst and make you a warrior. This is my objective is to teach you these things so you can become a warrior for God. A warrior of righteousness. A standard for cleanliness, standing on the integrity of God's word till the integrity of God's word permeates your flesh. Paul said that the life of Christ may be manifest in our mortal body and even in our flesh. How close are we to have that time? We won't be obedient. We won't even stop sinning for a day or two. The work's not done. Get the work done. Do not play with this because if death it's released for you. There are no excuses. None. Watch this. Approve unto God, and the word approved means acceptable. Oops. Study to show yourself acceptable to God. Oh, well, if I'm not acceptable, can I go with him? No. No. Unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed. And wait. I used to look at it not be ashamed when you go out. No, you don't want to be ashamed in front of God, let alone when you go out. Man, you're trying to go to God like, you see some of these programs they got, you know, where people come on and you think you can sing, you think you can dance, some of these other things, all right? And you get out there and some person out there, give them the best they got, and they, ain't, they get buzzed out, something like that, because they, they really couldn't, they just thought they could. You don't want this to happen when death comes to you. You think you're ready and you're not. But scripturally, you can be certain. Is that all right, director? Rightly, watch this, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that rightly dividing, the, the word dividing means as to slice. As to slice, to cut, straight cut. Imagine, you know how they, they slice loaves of bread. The, the bread is usually straight cut. Or you got a, a, a saw when you're working on building a home or, you know, a garage. You get the right saw, you put the length on it, you get the right length, it's going to cut it straight. God wants us to be able to rightly divide His Word of truth. Not just believe it, but rightly divide it where it can be proven. Don't tell me to give my life for something I just have to believe forever. Wait a minute. Don't tell me I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price and just believe it. I can start out that way, but come on, partner. You know, see, God knows me. I, I, I ain't playing. Look, look, okay, God, I know you, God. I submit myself. I honor you and all that. Okay. Now, all these promises you said, um, now what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his rights and all these things will be added. I'm look, I've been looking for stuff to be added all the time, and he does it. He's not here to have you believe until you go home to be with him. Uh-uh. Believe, obey, walk 
consistent with him, and they'll manifest. I can guarantee that. But watch this. Let's go on to something else. Ho, 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 let's see what I got here. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy 3 and 14. 2 Timothy 3 and 14. 2 Timothy 3 and 14, he says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Now watch what I'm going to say. It doesn't matter who you're sitting under. If you've given your life to God and you're learning from Him, you're learning from her, they're not a greatly knowledgeable folk. And men, men and women of yesteryear weren't knowledgeable. They knew certain things or stuff that was passed down. But watch what I'm going to do. I'm not fighting anyone, but watch how I'm going to do this which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. You and I have to be assured of this stuff. And the word assured of will give us to understand assured. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly that. Assured of from the Greek. Assured of. Like I said last week, positivity. We ought to be assured of these things, not just believe in them. There's things in the scripture that will prove what God says is true. Why do you think Jesus told him, search the scriptures? Y'all won't believe me, but search the scriptures. They are they which prove who I am. They stand up and testify exactly who I am. So now what? After he was resurrected, on the road to Emmaus, he could expound it unto them, Psalms, the prophets, different things that were in the books. And even when he was walking on the earth, Jesus quoted, <laughs> he even quoted Adam. But he quoted different writers in the books because it was designed to show the reality, the connection, the wholesomeness, the truth, the reality of God, not just believe. Well, you start off believing, and nothing wrong with that. But uh, that's not how we end up. <laughs> I just thought I'd share that. Watch this. But continue thou on the things which thou hast learned and been assured of. Get in the book. Question your leaders. Make sure that they can make you assured of this. If you you in the church, you, that you've been under certain doctrine, so you're, going, you're on your way to heaven. I want to go to heaven, Pastor. You're on your way home to heaven, son. You're on your way to heaven. Just keep on coming to church. You're on your way to heaven. Can I be assured of this, brother, pastor? If he or she tells you, yeah, ask them to give you scripture that the life you live and you are assured to be with God. If they can't, <coughs> I'll leave that alone. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Say, and he said, from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, and are able to make, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Let's move to another one. Okay. I want to move to, let's go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter. 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, the 29th through the 29th through the 33rd verse. 2 Samuel 22, 29 through 32. I believe. Let me see. 33. All right. There, 2 Samuel, it's an Old Testament, 22 through 29 and 33. I'm reading. So he says, Thou art, <laughs> well, thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee have I have run through troops. Hey God, by you I have run through troops, and by my God have I leaped over walls. By your strength I've run through troops, and troops. You want to know what that troops is? I'm going to make sure I tell you what that is. 
I have run to the troops and leaped up walls and don't realize that that word is troop. It means an army. Here's the man of God said, by you, by you, God, I've ran through military. I've ran through army. I've ran through folks. Oh, God. And my God, I have leaped over walls. For God, look, for as for God, his way is perfect. It's complete. And the word of the Lord is tried. What God says has been tried and proven. Why won't we stand on it? Why are we trying to preach and trying to teach and try to tell folks on the street, you shouldn't smoke, you shouldn't drink, but you ain't stand on the word either. You're not clean either. I'm not clean either. We shouldn't. What are we trying to do? Folks say, well, you need to make disciples. Huh? If I'm not living clean, I don't want to make a disciple. I shouldn't want to. Okay, watch this. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust Him. We'll go down to 33. For my God, excuse me, God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. I want you to see the man of God declaring strength and power to run through an army and then to leap over walls did that on purpose because I want you to see something else so let's go to Joshua 14 the book of Joshua 14 and this is what we should get in God's Word first of all his he has caused his word to be the word tower is what I like to tower above his own authority to tower above you know his majesty his word goes above that and it's got to be strong. We get in it, we stay in it, we stand on it. Watch this. Joshua 14 and 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal and Caleb the son of Jethuna, the Kenizzite, and unto him, thou knowest, and said unto him, Thou knowest the things that the Lord had said unto Moses. Watch this. You know the thing that God said unto Moses? The man of God concerning me? Watch what I'm going to show you. He said, you know, you, would add, you know what God said unto the man, man of God, Moses, what he said concerning me? In Kadesh Barnea, you remember? You would add, remember what he said? What? 40, out, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again, let me check it back here. Something's going on here. Brought him back word again. That's what I did. I brought him back word again. From K Barnea. I brought him back word again as was in my heart. Watch this. Nevertheless, my brethren that went with me. That yeah, that went went up, excuse me. My computer's getting strange, trying to get strange again went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. In other words, because the people so, they were hearty, they were believing, they were trusting God, and the things that they said, their hearts just melted like, oh no. We, we thought we were close to the promised land. So watch what he says. But I wholly follow the Lord. Now, if any man be in Christ, that in means wholly. If any man be in Christ, Woolly gives himself got the same definition that woolly completely be in Christ. I, said, I gave he said I gave myself to the things of God. He said, but I woolly follow the Lord. You've got to woolly completely wholly follow him. Watch. Watch what happens. So he goes, um, and Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon the feet thou trotter shall be thine inheritance and thy children forever, because thou hast wait. You have wholly followed the Lord thy God. Oh, well, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me the blessings of God are yea and amen, even if I don't follow him completely? No, they're not. That's the point I'm getting to. We've got to follow him and continue to follow him. Now watch this. Here's the part I like. <laughs> and behold, Lord, that hath kept me alive, as he said those 45 years. These He kept me alive these 45 years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children was wandering in the wilderness, now, lo, I am this day 
four score and five years old. So 45 years had passed. He is 45 years old this day. Watch what he says. As yet, as yet, I am as strong this day as I was the day that Moses sent me as my strength then even so is my strength now for war. So he's talking about a warrior. Here the man saying, you know what, I walked with God, I obeyed him and my strength, I retained it. I'm just as strong today as I was 45 years ago and I'm ready for war. Both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Give me my heritage. Whereof the Lord spake in that, uh, that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Ankins were there and that the cities were great and fenced. He said, If so be the Lord be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. This is why I tell you to get in and be assured of God's word. Men of old, they succeeded by standing on the word of God. Here's a man that stood on what God said was going to happen for him. He stood on it 45 years. And then his strength was retained because, you know, so I look at some of the church folks. After we done got a certain age, they ain't got no strength, they ain't got no energy. Lord have mercy, by the time they hit 65 ish and stuff, they're looking old and bent and wrinkled and bent over and all this black don't crack stuff, you can throw it out the window because it just, if you don't crack, it just gets jacked up. I've seen a lot of folks <laughs> just beat up. And I'm like, oh God, I'm going like, I'm to be beat up like that. And I, I, I'm older than them and I'm not beat up. My point is, God can do something in you if you give yourself completely to Him like you did at the start and do it every day. Maintain this walk. Give ourselves to Him that when the time comes, we'll still be ready for the blessing. For your strength will be retained. I'm just as strong as I was then, He said. For all these 45 years, now I'm 85 years old, I'm just as strong today as I was when it was said. And you heard what God said to Moses. So therefore, I'm ready to even to go to war. Man, 85 years old, I'm, like, I'm ready to go to war. What? What? I'm ready to go to war. And I'm ready to go out into war and come back, which means to me, I'm not planning on dying. This is what we have to understand what the Word said. This is what we have to be sure. The Scriptures give you a platform to stand on, but you must maintain this life.